our next invited speaker is Professor Yusuke Maeda from Yokohama National University. Professor Yusuke Maeda's talk will be on challenges for accelerating automation with home, industrial, and field robotics. Professor Maeda is professor in the Division of Systems Research Faculty of Engineering at Yokohama National University. His research interests include robotic manipulation, robot teaching, and decentralized manufacturing systems. Professor Maeda became a fellow of Robotics Society of Japan in 2019. Some of his various honors and accolades include the Best Manipulation Paper Award from IEEE International Conference on Robotics and Automation in 2013, Funai Foundation Award for Information Technology 2012, Manufacturing Systems Technological Achievement Award in 2010, 2007 Original Paper Award from PANAC, Funai Joho Kagaku Shoreiso uh, Information Technology Young Investigator Award and Young Investigator Excellence Award from the Robotics Society of Japan in 2004. Professor Maeda is a member of many professional societies, which include IEEE Robotics and Automation Society, Robotics Society of Japan, Japan Society for Precision Engineering, Japan Society for Mechanical Engineers, and Society of Instrument and Control Engineers. So may I request Professor Maeda for the invited talk, please. Thank you for your kind introduction, Professor Bhattacharya. Uh, today I'd like to talk about uh, our uh, research activities uh, on, on automation, and I'm very happy to have this opportunity. Okay, before talking about our research activities, I would like to briefly introduce uh, Yokohama City, is Japan's first port of call. It is uh, the second largest city in Japan and uh, 30 minutes away from Tokyo by local train. And it is known as the host city for 2002 FIFA World Cup final. And this is a photo of our campus. This area uh, is our campus and our laboratory is here. Now our laboratory is very small. Uh, the staff is one professor, it's me, and we have 16 students. Now currently most of uh, the students are Japanese. But uh, in this October, uh, we will welcome one Indian student. And our laboratory is mainly working on industrial robotics. Uh, some are related to robotic manipulation and assembly, and some are on robot programming, and some are manufacturing systems, and some are digital hand technology. And today, I uh, would like to focus on our challenges related to automation. Under COVID-19 pandemic, we have recognized the critical importance of automation anew. My talk is about our efforts in domestic automation, uh, factory automation, and mining automation uh, for more safety, efficiency, and comfort of our society. The first topic is a challenge in home automation, uh, optimization of dishwasher loading. The dishwashers uh, are greener choice than hand washing because it requires less water and detergent. And it, it has, the dishwashers have several advantages, including shorter washing time, prevention of rough hands, high temperature sterilization, and so on. However, in Japanese households, uh, dishwashers are not so widely used. Why? There are several reasons. We focused on this issue 
the load of this layout determination. In Japan, we usually use uh, compact dishwashers. So uh, users have to load dishes as many as possible in a compact, in such a compact dishwashers. So uh, we have to solve a puzzle for dish layout determination. So we find potential needs, uh, a support system for optimizing dishwasher loading. So we uh, consider a uh, 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 dishwasher loading support system. We do not uh, use uh, a robot system to fully automate uh, dishwashing, including uh, dishwasher loading. Instead, uh, we, we propose uh, a system just uh, support uh, human users uh, of dishwasher, uh, dishwashers. In our system, a tabletop image after meal uh, is taken by a smartphone. Then, uh, based on uh, image-based dish recognition, we can obtain the number of dishes for each kind. And then uh, we perform dish loading optimization, and we will obtain uh, an optimized dish layout. Today, I would like to uh, uh, focus on dish loading optimization part. Dishwasher loading can be formulated as a combinatorial optimization problem. In this case, uh, constraints uh, uh, that dishes and the dishwasher must not overlap. And the objective function uh, would be the total number of the loaded dishes. So uh, the problem is how to show uh, optimized dish layout uh, to dishwasher users within a realistic time. For that purpose, uh, we, we use an anytime algorithm uh, for optimization. In this case, we adopted a genetic algorithm uh, for that. This is the equipment we used in our experiments. Uh, these are racks uh, for dishwashers uh, uh, manufactured by Panasonic. And in our system, uh, based on uh, the number of dishes, uh, we can mm, optimize uh, dish layout uh, for dishwasher loading. By using a genetic algorithm, the, the layout uh, will be gradually improved and the result uh, is displayed uh, to the users. So by using uh, this system, uh, depending on the calculation time, uh, the result uh, is the optimized dish layout uh, is displayed uh, to the users, and the result is uh, uh, gradually improved, like this uh, graph. So after some experiments, we have uh, uh, found that our system uh, can uh, display satisfactory layouts in short time. So this is uh, one uh, uh, topic uh, in our efforts on um, automation in, in household issues. And next topic is also a challenge in home automation, a support system for origami holding. These are uh, humanoid uh, robot origami works uh, folded my, by my son. And such complex origami works are difficult to fold. But these are uh, uh, 
popular in preschool education. And uh, origami could be very useful uh, in, in promoting uh, or uh, maintain, uh, maintaining uh, dexterity in, uh, for ch children and uh, elderly people. So uh, uh, we are studying uh, supporting uh, origami works especially uh, for complex origami works. So uh, the goal of this study is to, to develop an assist system for complex origami folding. So we have developed a uh, origami simulator like this, uh, in which we can fold uh, complex origami works in a computer. And as a result of this origami simulator, we can obtain a crease pattern like this. And by using a cutting plotter, we can obtain a paper with creases like this. And also uh, origami simulator uh, can provide step-by-step uh, -step instructions of origami folding. So by using, a, uh, by using smart glasses, uh, the instructions uh, can be given to the user. So this is the, the overview of our assist system for complex origami folding. For origami simulation, uh, uh, we use uh, a dynamic simulation. And uh, we adopted rigid bodies with non-zero thickness uh, for simulating uh, origami folding. Paper parts are thin in uh, rigid bodies, and these are uh, connected uh, by a rotation axis uh, with springs. Uh, by using this structure, uh, we can flexibly uh, fold uh, origami model uh, in our simulator. So by using this origami simulator, uh, we can fold origami works like this video. By using a mouse operation, uh, we can place uh, creases on the paper, and then we can fold uh, the paper step by step. So by using this origami simulator, uh, we can reproduce complex origami works uh, in a computer. So these are some uh, origami works, a dragon and a human robot. Uh, in our simulator, uh, these models are available. So by using the simulator, uh, we can immediately obtain the origami instructions for these origami works. like these videos, step-by-step uh, -step instructions can be uh, uh, provided to uh, human users uh, who want to fold complex origami works. And the system uh, can be he used with smart glasses. So by using uh, augmented reality, uh, origami instructions uh, can be overlaid uh, over the real uh, uh, paper. And uh, we use uh, voice commands uh, uh, to enable hands-free operation. So by using this system, uh, users uh, can easily uh, fold many uh, complex origami works.
sorry. Okay. And the next topic is uh, our challenge in factory automation. SLAM integrated kinematic calibration of robot arms. The SLAM uh, simultaneous localization and mapping is widely used in mobile robotics. In our study, uh, we applied the SLAM technology to uh, fixed uh, robot manipulators. If we integrate uh, SRAM and uh, into industrial robots, then it is possible to perform uh, kinematic calibration of the robot and mapping simultaneously. We call this technology uh, SCRAM, uh, simultaneous kinematic calibration, localization, and mapping. Uh, by using uh, this method, uh, we can simultaneously perform kinematic calibration of the manipulator and uh, obtain a dense 3D mapping around the manipulator. Our Scrum uh, has several advantages. A simple installation, uh, we use only one sensor attached to the tip of the manipulator. And time saving, uh, we can uh, perform kinematic calibration and dense 3D reconstruction simultaneously. And low cost, uh, we can use affordable uh, camera uh, for uh, robot calibration. We have the developed several uh, ways uh, to achieve Scrum, but today I would like to focus on uh, one approach uh, uh, R uh, that uses RGB, uh, sorry, RGBD camera uh, and checkerboards. Uh, by using checkerboards, uh, we can uh, obtain uh, good calibration accuracy because the checkerboards uh, by using checkerboards, uh, we can uh, precisely identify the corners of the, the checkerboards. And by using the, the corner information, we can uh, achieve a good kinematic calibration result. But uh, of course, uh, as a disadvantage, we need to set up the checkerboards around the robot. But uh, we do not have to uh, uh, place the checkerboards uh, at uh, at specific uh, specified uh, positions, but we just place a checkerboard somewhere uh, around the manipulator. The procedures of our uh, SRAM integrated kinematic calibration is as follows. First, we capture RGBD information uh, by using uh, the, the camera attached to the tip of the manipulator. And then we record the joint values. And also, uh, next we clarify the positional relationship of the image, the RGBD image and the, the camera position and manipulator position. And then uh, we optimize uh, kinematic parameters uh, for kinematic calibration. Uh, based on the errors uh, uh, as a, the, result, uh, the result of uh, observing the checkerboards. After optimization, we can obtain uh, calibrated kinematic parameters. So then uh, we can map the workspace based on the RGBD information more accurately than the initial uh, nominal kinematic parameters. So this is uh, a result uh, of uh, simulation, virtual experiment. This is a 3D reconstruction before calibration. And this is a reconstruction after calibration. Uh, by observing uh, these checkerboards uh, uh, with uh, an RGBD camera. Uh, we can obtain a more accurate 3D map like this. 
And this is an example of uh, real experiments. Uh, by using a uh, robot manipulator like this, uh, we can um, obtain a 3D uh, point cloud map uh, in this real experiment. Okay, the next topic is about a challenge in factory automation, a versatile part feeder uh, with a sensorless in hand caging manipulation. Uh, there are many previous studies uh, on robotic in hand manipulation, and most of the studies uh, uh, focus uh, on the dexterity like humans. So uh, basically, he, they are based on rich sensors and force control. But we, our approach is a little bit different, uh, sen a sensorless approach. Uh, without object sensing and based on position control, we would like to uh, achieve in-hand manipulation. Of course, this approach uh, would uh, have uh, limited dexterity, but uh, it has several advantages like uh, easy implementation and also potential applications uh, to versatile part feeders. Conventional part feeders is like, they are like this. Uh, they are vibration based and uh, dedicated to one specific part. To make the part feeders versatile, some vision based part feeders. Uh, Vera, uh, they use uh, uh, cameras and robots, uh, but it, it is very uh, versatile, but of course expensive. So as a different approach, we would like to apply sensorless in-hand caging manipulation to uh, versatile part feeder. Uh, Caging is a method to constrain object geometrically. Uh, in this case, uh, object is uh, constrained uh, only by position control. By applying caging to in-hand caging manipulation, it is possible to achieve position control based in-hand manipulation without object sensing. So, Applying this idea to part feeders, it is possible to implement a versatile part feeder uh, via sensorless in hand caging manipulation. In this approach, hand motion is planned in advance. Uh, we know, if we know the shape of the part, then it is possible to plan necessary hand motion. And by using the planned motion, uh, it is possible to align the object regardless of the initial object pose without object sensing. So we have implemented a versatile part feeder uh, composed of a belt conveyor and a, a six uh, degree of freedom hand. Uh, we have considered two types of hand, one-sided part type and two-sided part type. And we have uh, executed uh, some alignment exp experiments. We consider several objects, some are convex and some are concave. And this is one example of alignment experiment. In this case, a square object is aligned. The alignment is achieved without object sensing. Please note that and the hand motion is uh, in, uh, the hand motion is the same in the upper video and the lower video. Oops. Stopped. And this is another uh, experiment. Uh, and this is two-sided uh, hands. And in this case, uh, the square object. Uh, can be aligned 
as a result of hand motion, in hand caging manipulation. And these videos are uh, experiments for different shape, different shaped objects. By using uh, planned hand motions, uh, part alignment uh, was achieved without object sensing. And these are examples, uh, experiments uh, for concave uh, shaped objects. Mm. One uh, possible problem, uh, potential problem is uh, jam in, in manipulation. In some cases, uh, jamming may occur. So in such cases, uh, we, we use a strategy for jam recovery like this. Uh, we backtrack hand motion when a jam is detected. And then uh, perturb the object pose with a conveyor motion. So by using the perturbation, usually it is possible uh, to recover from the jam. And this is uh, one effort in our factory automation. And the next topic is our challenge in field automation. Uh, optimization of traffic of dump truck feeds in mines. The target of this study is autonomous haulage system uh, in mines. And in this system, uh, many driverless autonomous dump trucks are used uh, to convey uh, Mm, mining products or uh, waste or something. And the dump trucks uh, uh, moves uh, from the loader to the dump dumping place repeatedly. This system is autonomous, so we can reduce uh, the risk of a human accident and also uh, it is possible to reduce labor cost. In this system, we want to maximize the production. But to maximize the production, uh, we need to minimize idle time of shovel loaders. For that purpose, we need to keep dump trucks uh, always ready to load in loading areas as much as possible. If we can use many, many dump trucks, it is easy. But of course, uh, dump trucks are expensive. Uh, uh, we, we want to use the minimum number of dump trucks uh, in mines. So our objective is to improve mining productivity via traffic control at intersections. In this study, uh, we, we proposed a uh, method of intersection passing control for dump trucks. For example, as in this figure, uh, there are three dump trucks uh, approaching to this intersection, truck A, B, and C. In this case, uh, six possible orders uh, exist. A, B, C, B, A, C, C, B, A, C, A, B, A, C, B, A, B, C, A. In our system, uh, first, we enumerate possible passing orders of dump trucks. And then we calculate the time loss of the trucks for each, uh, each order. And then we calculate uh, the expected loading loss due to the time loss. Because loading time is probabilistic, so uh, we need to consider the expected uh, loss. Uh, uh, in a probabilistic manner. And finally, we choose the passing order of the dump trucks to minimize 
the expected loading loss. So for that purpose, uh, we perform local optimization at each intersection at every time step. And this is a screen of uh, our dump truck uh, fleet simulator. Each black dots, each, each black dot is one dump truck, and the colored band uh, stands for a region. Uh, for uh, dedicated to one dump truck. Uh, the region is used for mutual ex exclusion. And by using our uh, method, uh, productivity was improved 3.3% in this case, then uh, fast in, fast out. Uh, method. So this is uh, one effort, our effort uh, for uh, automation in mining. Automation e technology is very important and required in, in many uh, various aspects in our society. And the Japanese government uh, want to promote automation technology and robot technology uh, through an event called World Robot Summit. And uh, the event include, includes robot competitions, industrial robotics, service robotics, disaster robotics, and junior categories. And I is served uh, as a core uh, committee member for the industrial robotics category. And we, ho we held an assembly challenge, a competition toward agile and lean automation in, in IT in 2021. And this is a video of uh, the champion team uh, who uh, succeeded in assembly of a belt drive unit like this. And such robot competitions are important uh, in education and uh, the research, uh, the further acceleration of research and development in automation technology. And I uh, worked for, for this event. So if you are interested in this robot competition, please visit. Uh, the website worldrobotsummit.org. And also, I uh, will serve uh, as a, a local uh, arrangement chair of uh, IEEE ICRA 2024 International Conference on Robotics and Automation, which will be held in Yokohama. So uh, please submit your good paper to this prestigious conference and see you in Yokohama in 2024. Okay, I would like to conclude my talk. Uh, for more information, please visit our website. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Professor Maeda. That is an excellent overview of the research in robotics from your laboratory. We can have a few questions from the audience, please. So, may I ask a, a question? Yes. Uh, uh, thank you for such a nice presentation. I am Nayan. Uh, I want to ask uh, uh, regarding the uh, jamming uh, uh, while uh, aligning the parts, there was a jamming you mentioned. So how to detect that jamming? Okay, that's a good question. And in this case, uh, we have no sensor uh, for uh, object uh, information detection. So uh, the, the jamming detection is based on uh, uh, joint encoders. If uh, <laughs> joint angles uh, stuck, 
then uh, we detect this the situation as jamming. Okay. And so the stucking is uh, detected by a current sensor? Or? Yeah, in, in our current implementation, uh, uh, joint angles can, uh, sorry, uh, I would like to, uh, to fix my uh, previous answer. Actually, not, not encoder, but uh, a potential meta is used for joint angle detection and uh, based on point potential uh, meta. Uh, jamming can be detected. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Professor Maeda, you have mentioned about SLAM integrated kinematic calibration robots. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, are they, uh, are these robots can be used for field ro uh, robots like agricultural robots? For agricultural application? Well, uh, basically, uh, our, our technology was developed basically for uh, fixed manipulators. So, uh, in agricultural uh, applications, uh, robots would be mobile. So, in such cases, uh, standard SRAM technology uh, would be more useful. But uh, of course, for example, if, uh, if we consider a mobile manipulator uh, for uh, agricultural applications and the manipulator uh, stops at a fixed position and move uh, its arm, then our technology can be used so if uh, we can find a good application uh, uh, in such uh, use cases, then yeah, uh, it would be possible. Hello. Yes. Yeah, Professor Maeda, I'm having one question. Yeah. Uh, regarding your sensorless uh, object detection, so uh, what kind of uh, uh, manipulator you're using? It is uh, either a redundant or it is... Uh, Underactuated. Uh, yeah, basically, uh, uh, in this case, uh, uh, we use a free actuated robot hand because uh, we need to uh, know the exact uh, position of the hand instead of uh, uh, sensing the object information. So. Uh, if we use unactuated robot hand, it is difficult to, uh, to identify the state of the robot hand. So basically, a fully uh, actuated hand is necessary. And that, uh, uh, as you mentioned, the uh, unactuated hand uh, would be preferable in some cases. So uh, if we can extend our theory uh, to unactuated uh, robot hands, then uh, it is a good uh, direction for further study. Thank you. Okay. And one, uh, one more question uh, regarding to this particular uh, uh, research uh, is that uh, uh, in this particular case, rather than rigid links, don't you think that uh, if we can implement uh, uh, soft uh, gripper, uh, soft manipulator, so it can adapt the shape of uh, the object in, and it will also hand uh, uh, in in hand. It will try to uh, make a form closure, and it will uh, help us to manipulate properly. What is your opinion on that? Well, uh, if we use a, a soft hand, then uh, it makes uh, much more difficult to to understand the state of the hand because due to the, the uh, the shape change of uh, the hand. So, in uh, in our idea, basically, uh, rigid hands should be used. And uh, if we, of course, as you mentioned, the soft hands are uh, very useful for dexterous manipulation. But in if we, we want to use soft low hands, then we sh uh, uh, should use uh, uh, sensors. Uh, to obtain more information for the robots and or uh, 
uh, objects, I, I think. Okay, okay, thank you very much. Thank you. I have a question. Yes. Um, uh, Madhu Sensei, uh, nice to meet you once again, and thank you very much for your nice presentation. Uh, my course mm -hmm. and in your slides on 33. Can you please move on the slide on 33? Sorry, uh, could you repeat again? Uh, the slide number is 33. I want to uh, uh, know the accuracy uh, of the construction uh, from the uh, image processing, like for the manipulation tax. 33. Sorry, number 33, wait a minute. <laughs> I would like to identify what is 33. Yeah, because you mentioned that uh, like the accuracy is better than the previous. So I just want to know the how much accuracy did you uh, from uh, from this construction? How is the your accuracy performance? Because I am also working with this uh, image construction and vision system. Well, uh, well, in this case, uh, in this case, uh, this is the virtual experiment. So we uh, have a ground truth. So it is, and also in this case, it is obvious that the, the, the after calibration is improved uh, than before the state of before calibration. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, for in real experiment, it is not easy to to show the the, the improvement uh, of accuracy. In our real experiment, we use the laser sensor. Uh, and uh, by evaluating uh, the uh, scattering of the object, po uh, sorry, uh, tip position of the manipulator uh, with inverse kinematic solutions, uh, which uh, should be the same tip position. Uh, and the scattering can be used as a measure for the quality of the kinematic calibration. Uh, it, the, the approach can be found uh, in our paper uh, presented uh, in advanced robotics. So if you are interested in this approach, please consult the paper. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Maeda, for a very informative presentation once again. And I hope that the students will follow up with you in future with their questions. And thank you very much. Let us thank, thank you. Professor Maeda.